Water. Where exactly is it from? And how did it all come to Earth? Now, this is a question we're going to try to answer in today's video. And this is based on an article I've read in space.com that talks about how apparently the water on the surface of our planet is about a million years older than the rest of our solar system. Isn't that kind of interesting? Anyway, let's talk about this in today's video. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And so what we're going to do today is, well, it's going to be a pretty simple simulation. We're going to actually just open our Earth simulation. And it's this one right here, Earth and the Moon. And what we're going to do is basically just remove all of the water. There's not that much of it anyway. From Earth, making our planet completely bare. As in bare of water. There's no water left on it at all. Although surprisingly, there's still ice in the Himalayas, and that's because I think this is a texture that appears um, on Earth by default. Anyway, so here's Earth without any water, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually just throw uh, a very large amount of asteroids, and here we're talking about these random asteroids, onto the surface of our planet and see how many we need to drop on it for uh, for this planet to actually start acquiring liquid water on the surface. Because the, the theory behind the water on our planet is that it's very likely that most of it came from the collisions of these asteroids, just like I'm about to make one right here. And so let's smack one of them, uh, Halley's Comet, into our planet. Here it comes, it's about to collide, and boom. So the theory and the hypothesis here is that um, most of the water came from these collisions. And it, it, this was early on in the development of the solar system. And this is how the scientists think water arrived to our planet. Now, we're still not sure if this is exactly what happened, but this is the best explanation we have. And let's try to test this theory, this hypothesis, by doing this over and over and over and over again until there is some sort of a liquid ocean on the surface of our planet. We're also going to be watching the total mass of the planet as it increases because I would like to find out um, how many uh, masses or how much mass you need to actually uh, launch at the planet in terms of asteroids for this to actually acquire liquid water. And then we're going to do a little bit of math and estimate, you know, how many asteroids approximately collided with our planet for us to acquire all of this liquid water. So, so far we obviously have nothing and we've just collided one a little planet, but let's actually choose um, some of these objects, some of the bigger objects, like for example, dwarf planets and larger asteroids, like for example, Vesta, uh, that uh, have quite a lot of water on in them, inside of them, and um, that will hopefully add quite a lot of water to our planet. So let's, let's start with something a little bit smaller first. We're going to just launch a bunch of random asteroids here. Uh, these are all randomly generated. They're basically just going to approach our planet and smack into it and add a bit of mass hopefully add a little bit of water as well, because we're, we're not exactly sure how much water is being added right now, but we can check right here under water. So you can see the percentage is already increasing. So it's already increased um, a little bit of water, and I think I've launched, uh, launched about 10 of them. And I'm not really watching mass yet, but here it is. It's increasing as well. Let's add 10 more. And see what happens. So you can kind of see there's already clouds in here because obviously the water vapor has started evaporating and added clouds to the atmosphere. And uh, the water percentage is still quite low actually. It's not very high. So we're not going to have any liquid water just yet. Now if I actually start adding larger objects, so for example things like Haumea, this may give us something to work with here. So there's a very large explosion. Uh, a lot of the fragments got released into the outer system, though. But most of them will eventually make their way back to Earth. And at this point, we... Oh, I think we've actually lost water. That wasn't good at all. That, that was the opposite of what I wanted to do. I think a lot of the water that was in the atmosphere and on the surface has unfortunately either evaporated or disappeared somewhere. So that's actually a really good, interesting point because it's possible that larger collisions would actually remove water from uh, from our planet. So it's possible that there was a limit to size of asteroids. So it may have been only smaller asteroids that actually successfully added water to our planet. 
because the larger collisions would very likely evaporate and release all of this water that we've acquired into the outer solar system or I guess inner solar system but away from our planet. Uh, nevertheless, there, there is some water, I think. There's a little bit of water. Is there? Nothing? Oh no, it's all gone. All right. Let's go back to... Uh, <laughs> we're gonna start this from scratch. Step one. We're just going to launch asteroids. Nothing but asteroids. And I'm gonna try to count how many I'm launching. That's 20. That's 30. 90. And that's about 100. Roughly 100. And let's watch the water increase now. So you can see this is actually definitely working. The water percentage has increased quite a lot. But we're still not at the point where we're going to have liquid water. And I think because of I've because of that experience with Haumea, uh, this may actually have added a lot of extra mass that we shouldn't really have on our planet. But I think if I keep doing this, this will take me quite a while because we currently have um, 0.000764%. If I go back to the original Earth simulation and if I look at how much water we actually need here, I need to have about 0.02%. So I'm, I'm missing about 1,000 or 10,000 more of these. So I need to launch something like, uh, oh boy, that's going to be a big number. Close to a million rocks, I think. I need to launch close to a million asteroids for, for it to acquire this much water. So let's try this again from scratch. I'm going to just remove this again and try to launch Ceres at it because Ceres is uh, one of the bigger dwarf planets and it does have a very, very large percentage of water um, underneath all of the layers that it has. So here, about 30% of this uh, dwarf planet is actually water, or 33%, like a third of it is actually water. And so let's see what happens when we do this to our planet. It's going to about, it's about to have a really interesting collision, and we're just watching this percentage. We're trying to make this 0.02% approximately. And here it goes. Boom. Okay. That did something. Oh, look at that. Oh, this number has actually jumped quite dramatically. We're only about... Okay, so that's 0 0.003. That's about a tenth of what we need. So we just need to launch 10 more series, I think. Uh, well, let's see what happens. And actually, since I've waited a little bit uh, and I didn't actually launch anything yet, else yet, you can kind of see there is already a formation of liquid water on the surface of this Earth just from one series. Now, series is about... Uh, or represents about 33% of all of the asteroids in the asteroid belt and its mass is obviously much larger than the normal asteroid but but this is actually a pretty good uh, picture of what may have happened early on so these larger asteroids and smaller asteroids all collided over time over periods of millions of years and have probably added water to our planet so we're gonna tr test this theory by launching nine more nine I think nine Let's add nine more series, and uh, we're going to launch nine more of them into our planet right now. And we're going to start with just five for now, mostly because I don't want the game to be too slow. So this is going to be the first five series that will um, collide with the planet. But even now, you can kind of see there's already a lot of water on the surface. That's actually really, really cool. Uh, one series added a lot more water than I expected. And uh, even that large collision didn't really evaporate anything yet, but we might might end up losing some of the water when these new objects collide with the planet. So let's let's see what, let's discover what happens. So here comes series number two, colliding with our planet and bringing some more icy water to the surface. Okay, so the numbers are changing; they're jumping up and down. We're not sure what's going to happen after a few years, but we're going to wait. This is so beautiful, though. This, just observing these collisions is absolutely marvelous. And then we're going to have a few more. And so this, this is essentially what early Earth experienced quite a lot um, in the first few million years after its formation. A lot of these objects obviously collided over and over. And the next four are actually coming at the same time for some reason. Interesting. Okay. I ma managed to somehow time it so that they all collide at the same time. And we almost have the same amount we had before. It's already at 0 0.02. This was a little bit higher than 0 0.02. But even after six series collisions, which represents about two times the amount of all asteroids in the asteroid belt, um, 
which is in terms of mass I'm going to show you a number in a second we may actually have enough water for us to have liquid water we'll find out if it does happens uh, but in terms of the actual total mass added this is not even one percent of total mass of earth as a matter of fact it's uh, 0 0.06 percent of mass of earth which is very 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 little so it didn't take a lot of asteroids to add all of this but just based on the number i see here i'm gonna accelerate this a little bit just to run time a little bit more and wait for all of this to cool down i'm gonna have a bunch of uh, different new formations here a lot of craters a lot of very large craters but in reality this obviously wasn't as dramatic as uh, six large objects it's very likely that uh the water on earth came from smaller collisions over time so it wasn't really just you know six large asteroids that arrived here there might have been some large dwarf planets that collided with earth but it's very likely that it was much smaller um, asteroids that I showed you before by using this random asteroid button that actually did this a million times. It just using series was a lot more convenient and a lot quicker in my case. Uh, okay, so with 0.02% uh, it's a little bit lower than it was before. So maybe we need to add one more series. Making this a total of seven series or the Ceri. Seven series on the surface of our planet which gave us almost exactly the amount we wanted. Uh, all right, so now all we have to do is wait for this planet to cool down. And then we're going to actually cheat a little bit and lower the number almost right away. There we go. And now let's just wait for all of this stuff to uh, melt and take a look at the surface and see what we've actually created. So you might notice that uh, the some of the continental shelves are actually more exposed than they should be and that's because the craters I've created actually added a little bit more volume or surface volume to the planet so the water is spread out a lot more than it used to be but it looks like and this is actually enough asteroids for us to add liquid water to earth and all it took is seven series now let me add one series in orbit around our planet so I can show you how small it is and this actually used to be an asteroid this used to be the largest asteroid in our solar system until it was later designated as a dwarf planet because um, it's basically spherical and it's massive enough to maintain the, the, its own um, spherical shape uh, but not massive enough to be designated as a planet even though when it was originally discovered in 1850 something 1856 is it I don't remember 18, 1800s over 150 years ago it was originally thought to be a planet, but it really isn't. So anyway, so the mass here, in terms of masses of Earth, is it's very, very small, but in terms of masses of Moon, this is about 1.3% of the mass of Moon. And we needed seven of these. We actually needed seven of these to uh, create water on our planet, which is something that would look like this. It's about 9% of the mass of the Moon. I kind of just changed it, but nothing else happened. I expected th this to increase size, but it didn't. Anyway, so it's about 9% mass of the moon. And that, that was, um, it's not actually that much when you think about it. So 9% uh, of the size of the entire moon, which is somewhere right here. So here's the moon. Imagine 9% of this, so one tenth of the moon. When it collided with our planet Earth, it added all of the water onto, onto the surface. And that's because most of the asteroids have quite a lot of ice in them, have quite a lot of water ice in them. And so the series, about a third of the series is actually water. And when they all smacked into Earth, they brought water with them. And that was creating this beautiful liquid ocean that I was kind of able to recreate, even though I've killed all of the life and vegetation on our planet, unfortunately. But I think if I just accelerate this a little bit, you'll see that when all of this stabilizes, it's going to look relatively similar to what it looked like before. Uh, because the amount of water here is 0.0257% of the total mass. Total mass has not actually increased that much. We're still at 1.00 masses of Earth. And uh, if I were to go back to the original simulation, which I'll do in a second, you'll see that this percentage is very similar to what it was before. And so it looks like our simulation and our experiment worked and we were able to add water to our planet by basically doing nothing but colliding with colliding it with large asteroids. Actually, this is apparently even lower than it was. So maybe you just need about 6.5 series and not 7. 
And so here is a pretty good representation of how much material you would need to collide with uh, with our Earth to basically create this liquid ocean on the surface. Obviously, adding a little bit of uh, mass and a little bit of rock in the process as well. And um, this would be an object, if we were to just do it at once, it would be an object about a thousand kilometers in radius and third of this object is water. Uh, density is very low, it's, it's about 1.2 grams per centimeter cube. And uh, its total mass is about 9% of the moon or in terms of kilograms, it's 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 24, 21st power which is quite quite a lot of mass actually, but obviously not a lot when you compare it to Earth or the Moon. So if all of this mass was to uh, smack to the surface of our planet, this would add enough water to create all of our oceans. So I'm going to rename this into the water bowl. This is how all of the water got to our surface according to the scientists and according to the best explanation that we have today. And before I finish this, I actually wanted to compare this to Pluto, which is the biggest dwarf planet. And let's see how uh, how small it is in comparison to the Pluto. So here's Pluto and here's our water bowl. They're actually almost the same in size, but Pluto is just a little bit bigger. And so Pluto, um, if Pluto actually collided with our planet, it would very likely um, flood our planet with even more water, which means that we might not even have any continents on the, on the surface of our planet. So uh, Pluto is actually big enough and has enough water to flood this entire planet in creating something that would look more like an um, ocean world than the planet that we know uh, today. And let's see if this actually happens. I'm going to accelerate this a little bit and wait for Pluto to collide with our planet. We're actually going to remove the water bowl and instead let's, um, let's stop velocities. If I hold all velocities, we should actually expect it to collide with our planet almost right away. And here comes the collision. Let's see what happens to our planet's composition when Pluto collides with it. And we're going to go into materials and look at that. 0.67%. That's already three times more than we used to have. If I accelerate time now, I have a strong feeling that the surface of this planet, once it stabilizes and cools down because it's about to get really, really hot here, the temperature, I believe, is 600 degrees Celsius. Uh, but the water is still there. It's still in the atmosphere. Once the, all of this cools down, there's a very likely, very high chance that um, we might have a liquid ocean that's basically larger than anything else we've ever seen before. And there you go. It, that happened actually really, really fast because I had uh, time acceleration. But uh, there's like two continents I see so far and nothing else in the vicinity. And so this is what this planet would look like if even more water came to our planet from these asteroids or from uh, larger collisions with Ceres and Pluto. Um, and so after billions of years, if more asteroids collide with our planet, even without the effects of global warming, we might, we might actually have a very large water world on our hands. And anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it so, and hopefully now you know how we got all of this beautiful water on our planet Earth. And thank you so much for watching, I appreciate all of your help. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who you think might like watching various space, math and science videos and uh, like this video if you've actually enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later and as always, bye bye. Let's finish this video with a few fireworks and a large explosion of our home planet Earth. It didn't actually explode, but it did turn very, very hot. See you guys later. Bye-bye.